If you're having problems with your SCR not wanting to plate solve it, don't worry, I got you. I got a number of different things you can try in order to get it to success successfully plate solve. And we're gonna walk you through every single step in this video. The first thing we're going to try is we're just gonna make sure we are connected on our tablet or whatever you're using to control it. We're gonna jump into the preview section and we're just going to take a short exposure, let's say two seconds, and let's try to take a picture. And once the picture comes in, we're just going to look at it and see, can we see any stars? If you can, you can jump to the next chapter on the timeline. If not, then we need to figure out why. First of all, the simplest things to check is, have you removed the front cover of your telescope? Maybe check on your guide scope if you have one of those as well. Just have a look. Can you actually see Polaris? from where you're standing next to the telescope? Are you shooting into the side of a building? Is there a cloud in the way? All of those things can be um, obstructing and, and preventing the, the camera from actually seeing the stars. I have seen situations where even just a, even though there was like just a hole in the cloud just around Polaris, that was enough that there was a thin layer of cloud that I couldn't see enough stars that we were able to actually um, get a proper plate solve in. You can also go up here to the camera settings. Make sure that your camera, that is the correct camera that is selected. You can see I have my ASIR 1600 mm Pro, which is the correct camera. In case you have two cameras, make sure it hasn't flipped them around and it's using the guide scope or something else, something silly like that. Make sure that the little toggle next to it here, that it is actually toggled and turned on. We see now we've got it turned off here. We just go back in here, we select the camera, and when we turn on, make sure that that is turned on. Otherwise, obviously, you're not going to be able to see anything at all. The next thing that's good to check is to see if you are actually proper in focus. There is a number of different ways you can do that. You can just look at your preview and see if the stars are nice and small. If you do have a autofocuser on the telescope like I have here, you can go into the focusing and you can click the little autofocus down here and it will now go into the autofocus mode. I'm not going to run that now because, well, total cloud cover and it's daylight. But you can either run an autofocus routine if you have an autofocuser. If you don't have an autofocuser, you can either do it manually by taking a picture, readjusting, taking a picture, and, and readjusting again. Or even better, if you have a Batonov mask, just this one doesn't fit this telescope because there's one built into the cap, so I can screw on the, off the front here. There we go. And there's a built-in Batonov mask inside the, uh, inside the front cap here. If you don't have a Batonov mask, I highly recommend getting one. You can get these relatively cheaply or you can 3D print one of your own if you have a 3D printer. And if you're curious how these Batonov mask works, works, check out the uh, Cosmic Field Guide, um, my book that you can get over on deepspacebooks.com. The last method you can use for getting focused with the ASIR is that you can go back to your tablet, you go into the focus mode here, and if you click the, the camera button, you get a basically like a, a, a box. You can drag that around until you find a star you want to use to focus. And you can now see it will go into like a continuous shooting mode. You can see down here in the corner, it's continuously shooting now. And basically right now, it can't find any stars for obvious reasons. But if there were stars, you would be able to basically see that star. It will give you both a max brightness and it will give you what's called the full width half max, which is essentially a measure for how big the stars is in pixels. Uh, the, of the, the width of the star at half the peak. Um, but basically what you want to do is you want to just adjust your focuser until your full width half max is as low as possible and your peak brightness is as high as possible. So peak brightness needs to be high, full width half max needs to be low. Get those as low as you, as you can. Once you're done, whatever fo focusing routine you want to go through, then try to plate solve again. Ah. I am just going to jump in here for the rest of this video because it's getting a little cold outside. The next thing you should check is if the telescope is actually pointing where it thinks it's pointing. The easiest way to do so is I often just go back into the preview and then down here in the corner you have this little um, like Big Dipper icon. If you go in here, it will now show you where it thinks your, uh, your telescope is pointing. You can see right now it just assumes I'm perfectly polar aligned because I haven't done any plate solves at, uh, yet. But make sure that it, it thinks it is where it's actually pointing. Because if the telescope is not pointing where it's supposed to, um, or where it thinks it does, then you have an issue. And then you need to go and consult your manual for your mount to figure out um, what's gone wrong. Because it's something has probably gone wrong 
in the setup of that. But if you're using a uh, an equatorial mount, default is that you are pointing, as you can see here, around Polaris. So make sure you're shot in that uh, general direction. And you can always try, if you can't get it to plate salt, try to move it a little bit closer. In one of my previous videos, I showed you a trick where you can use a laser pointer and put it through the guide or the, the pole alignment scope to basically see where it's pointing. And I use that to get it. I can often get it within like two degrees um, of Polaris when I'm using that method. So, so, so that's a really, really fast and easy way to get your scope approximately lined up with, uh, with Polaris. The next thing you can try is to try to just get more stars available in your field when you're doing the plate salt. There's a number of different ways you can do this. The first thing you should do is if you have a filter wheel, you go up here to the filter wheel and you make sure that you've set to your luminance filter, if you have a luminance filter, of course, but you should be in one of the filters that, that collects as much light as possible. If you're using narrow bands, don't have it on a narrow band because that's going to make it more difficult to get enough light in to get enough stars in your field that you can do a proper plate salt. So always make sure that you're on your luminance filter when you're doing plate salts. If you do not have a, a filter wheel, or if you don't, you're not using filters, then what you can do is when you go in here to your polar alignment, down here underneath the play button, you actually have a exposure time setting. I normally run one second with my... Um, uh, one second with my luminance filter, which is enough at around astro dark, then I can get a plate salt in. But you can increase the timer here up to, let's say, two seconds, for instance, to try and get more stars. Or maybe you put it up to four or five seconds to try and get more stars in the frame. Of course, the, long, the higher you put it up, the longer it's going to take, as it's going to expose for longer. So, so I usually just keep mine at one second. You can put yours up, try to get more stars and see if that will solve it for you. Now, if you still can't get a plate salt in, there are more things we can try. The next thing I would recommend you try is what's called a blind salt. The way you do this is you go into your uh, camera settings and in here you can see you have your main scope focal length. Basically go in here and reduce that to zero. What happens now is instead of you telling what the focal length of your telescope is, it's going to just try to guess it. Of course, make sure that number is actually correct for your telescope, because if that number wasn't correct with what the focal length of your telescope is, then that's likely why it wouldn't plate solve. But assuming you tapped in those numbers correctly when you set up your scope, try to set it to zero, go back in and do a plate solve again in the, uh, in the pole alignment tool. Remember that now that you have basically given it another degree of freedom it needs to solve for, it's going to take longer. So don't be surprised if it takes longer to solve now. Just remember when you then hopefully get a solve in to remember what that focal length was and type that in here. Go in and I'm going to type in back. So remember it was 345 for mine. There we go. So that you know next time what the focal length actually is. Because I think officially mine is supposed to be 344, but I think it's 345. One millimeter of focal length probably doesn't make a big difference. But I know that I once set mine incorrectly and it wouldn't play itself. So make sure that's set correct, and if not, set it to zero, do a blind solve, and while it's going to require some patience, it might uh, solve the issue for you. Okay, we are slowly running out of things to try, but there are two more settings we can try and change in order to get this to work. If you go up here to the eye in the upper corner, you have some options you can set in here. You can see you have it as experimental features. There's one called new plate solve. Try to enable that. It's a new plate solving algorithm that's available. And you can see here I'm running the version 222. Um, try to enable that. It might help. It might not. But it's worth a shot for you. If you're this far into the video and you still haven't solved it, then try to enable that. Now go and try with that, and if that doesn't solve it for you either, the last setting you can try is to go in and set the all sky polar alignment and see if that will solve it for you. There's a chance that's gonna, gonna do it for you. Now, even if this doesn't work, there's really only one thing left for you to try, and that is to go down to the description of this video, find the link for this channel's Discord community, and come over and try to ask over there. We have a lot of really knowledgeable people that might be able to help you with some additional tips and tricks that I haven't covered in this video. The main scope is a Williams Optics. It's a Zenith Star 73. Uh, on top of it up here, so this is a Mead 
LXD75. I got this second hand. It's a six-inch Newtonian and got...